We are live. Can I get a motion? Madam Chair, I move to uh, adjourn out of executive session. Second. Moved and seconded. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? All right. We are under old business policy revisions. Review or revision? It says policy revisions. Are you on A? Yeah. Yep, A. Because there were some strikeouts in. Uh, Yep. Yeah, I got police review A. That's We're new business. business. Oh, old geez, business. Louise, what am I looking at? <laughs> <laughs> old business, please. <laughs> uh, Madam Chair, uh, I move to approve first reading, correct? No, second. Second. Final. Second, final. second final, if you'd like. Okay. Um, move to approve on second and final reading of policy CVI. Superintendent Evaluation Tool Template, uh, Policy IJOC, and Policy IJOC-E. And what about JLCD? Am I on the right spot? And CBI also. Oh, uh, and Policy JLCD. All second. Moved and seconded. Any discussion? He did CBI first. It, okay. I'm just not with it today. Oh, <laughs> gosh. Well, it's only got four attachments. Must be those pain pills. Oh, right. It's got the right, tool no, yeah. attachments. Yeah. So that's what I was reading as the attachments. <laughs> <laughs> no, you're not. <laughs> <laughs> Who typed that? Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? All right. We're on B, under old business. Consider for approval, second and final reading of job descriptions. Madam Chair, uh, I'll move to approve on second and final reading. Daycare facility operation director, daycare facility support staff, and assistant daycare facility operation director job responsibilities, or job second. descriptions. Moved and seconded. Any discussion? I did. Chairman. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Consider for approval second and final reading of revised salary schedules. Madam Chair, you'll remember that this is the. Uh, Say that again. <laughs> <laughs> Under old business C, consider for approval second and final reading of revised salary schedules. Okay, now I'm in the right, wrong place. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> uh, so, <laughs> yeah, that's right. Uh, uh, Madam Chair, you'll recall that this is the first group of salary schedules we brought forward for change, and you'll have others in new business. Okay. Get a motion, please. Madam Chair, I move that we approve on second and final reading the revised salary schedules for school year 2021 and 2022 as listed. I'll second. Moved and seconded. Any discussion? Madam Chair, the only thing, I don't have any uh, changes other than I'm looking at the 12 month non certified staff from one. That's the No, you're in the wrong place. I know. <laughs> Wherever the uh, nurse was listed, is she listed under nurse? Certified. Yeah. Um, no, she's going to be in the new. Oh, it's further down. Oh, yeah. Wrong one then. <laughs> yeah. Okay. You, man. We're not with it today, are we? What he is. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? D. Consider for approval second and final reading of special education para evaluation form. So this was the one that she brought to us and we had made the, Joe had made the suggestion of having um, another category. And, oh, yeah, right. Yeah. Okay. They added the, the third cat or the fourth category. Can I get a motion please? Madam Chair, I move that we approve the new special ed paraprofessional evaluation form. Second. Moved and seconded. Any discussion? Madam Chair, I move to 
moved and seconded. Is that on second and final? Yes. Yes, second and final. Any discussion? Where am I? Now I'm lost. <laughs> Did we vote already? Not no. Okay, all in favor, thank you. Aye. Aye. We're all opposed. <laughs> all right. Now we're on to new business. Policy review. Madam Chair, no changes recommended to policy DKC. Okay. Anyone have any recommendations? All right, B, policy revisions. Madam Chair, in GCCA-R and GDC-R, those are to change from a committee to uh, Mr. Uh, Johnson being the person that you'd submit to Sick Bank as the HR person. And then we do have a couple other uh, changes in, the, in DKCE1 and DKCE2. Okay. Can I get a motion? Madam Chair, I move to approve on first reading policy GCCA-R, GDC-R, policy DKC-E1, and policy DKC-E2. Second that. Moved and seconded. Any discussion? Yes. Is this in regards to, because now you do the forms online? That's what I figured, yeah. Madam Chair, um, as far as policy DKC-E1, um, going through that, you know, previously we had made some changes um, to kind of be in line with the U.S. General Services Administration per diem rates, um, which is still in here. What I would suggest, items five and six on here both, um, uh, you know, again, that uh, going along with what we changed previously for just per diem rates themselves, daily meal rates, the $85 for in-state uh, hotel room in the, or in-state and then $150 for out-of-state, that is just for hotel rooms, correct? Um, so, you know, I would recommend, you know, that again we follow the GSA because the GSA lines out state by state, region by region within those states because you go to Cody and stay overnight, you're not going to get a room for $85 a night. It's just not going to happen, you know. And so uh, GSA sets what those rates are, and the majority of the time the state will follow those same rates as well. Um, and so I don't see any reason why we couldn't just kind of be in line with that and just reference GSA. That way as they change from year to year, we, we don't have to make a policy change. Thoughts, Dustin? Go ahead, Mr. Johnson. Uh, Madam um, Chair, members of the board, that's what we shifted to for our mileage was using the government services agency right. rates. As well as the M and IE meal and, and yeah. incidental expense. Yeah. Um, so you know, it so make sense to move that direction with this as well. Okay. <coughs> so with this being first reading, those are recommendations. Anything else? Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? All right. Consider for approval um, CCC members and stipends. Madam Chair, you see before you our representatives like to thank all those that give time to CCC um, and welcome uh, Julia Lindquist as our new RWE representative. Okay. So do we need a motion? Yes, please. Madam Chair, I move to approve uh, the CCC board or members as listed. I'll second. Moved and seconded. Any discussion? Yeah, what is the stipend right now? $1,000. That's what I thought. Okay. Well, I guess I need to include stipend in that motion. Um, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Okay. Consider for approval first reading of revised salary schedules. So these are the ones we haven't seen yet. Can I 
Madam Chair, you'll see uh, the ones that we did not address in our first round. And shout out to Kathy for doing such a great job on these. <laughs> Madam Chair, I move that we approve on first reading and revise salary schedules for school year 2021 and 2022. Can I second? Second. <clears throat> Moved and seconded. Any discussion? Madam Chair, this is where I just want to make the comment, you know, I think considering only having one school nurse for three buildings and, and all the responsibilities and actually even with the um, leadership role she kind of plays you know amongst uh, the group of school nurses throughout the state and the region I mean honestly I mean just that level of pay to me doesn't seem to coincide with that level of responsibility well I'll tell you that would I would love to pay her more I mean that I mean she does a phenomenal job I will tell you that the one thing that I run into with Nurse Huckfeld is that she's not clonable, and what I mean by that is I would love to have three of her, or, you know, love to be able to afford three of her, you know, in our budget as well. But what I'm trying to do to support her more is, you know, that we've been using uh, Nurse Polson a lot, especially during this pandemic, um, and we're just, we haven't, you know, there's not a specific budget for that. We're just green sheeting her time trying to give her additional support so that she's not traveling between buildings at least at the start so at this point I'd rather support her with more manpower uh, than I would think about compensation but she's definitely uh, a leader in our state and, and that certainly could be something we talk about in the future but I wholeheartedly agree she's doing a tremendous job she's a great liaison for us between uh, the state county health officials our nursing association uh, state board and those folks but uh, she's doing a tremendous job we're glad to have her it could be something that's brought up in the spring I think Joe it could be brought up in salary discussions I would just like to add that I love these salary schedules mm -hmm. they're so simple so easy to read uh, you know what to expect like this it's I love it uh, madam chair I'm actually having have having looked at them now because I've been talking about this for like four or five years I'm a little disappointed that it's taken us this long to get here I know it's a leap of faith and it's a budgetary piece as well but I actually have run that over and over and over in my head and I think the predictability for mr. Johnson and the district is going to be good for the board good for us as a whole um, it's going to solve some of those problems that we go through every spring and not to mention it's really going to be easy for Kathy uh, which is also a goal of this because we'll hold people harmless but now we won't keep track of BA plus 15 plus 30 plus 40 you either have a bachelor's or you have a master's and when you walk in and hand Kathy your master's degree certificate her paperwork's done we can move you to master's pay so we have folks moving toward degrees if they're taking credits so it's going to be in their field so it takes care of a lot of things so we're pretty excited too and they look great they do look really good madam chair i have a comment just looking at the occupational therapist and the, and the school psychologist those numbers seem low to me is that on par with other districts when we're paying these guys i'm just curious I haven't done it. <laughs> you know, sure i mean i'm sure they'd love a raise hey rick we just love you man but <laughs> I think they were on par with the state uh, expenditures that were put out. Okay. Yeah, I I don't want to quote a whole lot because I haven't done a lot of in-depth um, research on it, but what I have seen, yes, they are. Okay. I've looked at more recently. Um, but <coughs> again, it, it all depends on you know what you're comparing with, years of experience, all those things that go into the game. And that's proof again how simple these are I've looked at these every year for the last six years <clears throat> and I couldn't tell you the numbers because they were so confusing to look at and chart and this is very the numbers are very simple and straightforward so any more discussion thanks to Kathy for making them look so good and simple yes thank you yeah. all right 
All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Right. E under new business. Consider for approval student request. This would be Madam. the part-time student request. Madam Chair, I move to approve the part-time student request as presented. I'll second that. Moved and seconded. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Right. F. Madam Chair, in regards to the non-resident student matter, the school district would like to act as a liaison to make contact in regards to a GED program and educational planning to promote future successes. Okay. Anything else? Do we need to go to executive session again? Okay. So we are on to H. We don't need a motion. Okay. No, the um, deci decision made by the administrator stands. All right, H. Thank you. Consider for approval annual staff appreciation purchase. Madam Chair, we'd like to do the chamber bucks again for staff that we deliver in November as part of Thanksgiving. And um, just as a staff appreciation, I think it's really well received by our staff. Okay. It's a yearly item. Can I get a motion, please? Madam Chair, I recommend the board approve the purchase of chamber bucks as a token of appreciation for district staff members. Second. Moved. Seconded. Any more discussion? So in the past, how big a turkey? Just says that the retail price for a fresh turkey is 150 a pound, or about 30.20 for a 20 pound bird. I'm not sure, correct? Well, because that's what we used to get out as turkeys. Mm -hmm. Right. So sure. if you're what the total would be forgiving, what was that? Kind of mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, because we're just getting less I mean, it's it's worth more than the Okay, Madam Chair, I'd like to um, redo my, I'd recommend the board approve the purchase of chamber bucks and the, of $30 per staff member as a token of appreciation for district staff members. I'll second. Okay, moved and seconded. Any more discussion? Chauncey? No? I appreciate, I just appreciate, <laughs> I appreciate the board doing this for our staff. I think for our new staff, it's almost shocking. They're like, really? And so, and our veterans, I get a ton of emails thanks to the board, so. Well, I was thinking the same thing, Travis, so I'm glad you said something. I Thank just, you. I thought about it before, but I didn't check, so I just Google the cost. <clears throat> well, and it's gone up. <laughs> As everything has, <laughs> yeah. yes. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Right. Aye. Consider for approval early notification of resignation and retirement. Madam Chair, I just wanna, this is an annual item. I appreciate the board's uh, work here. I, I think that uh, this has given us an opportunity to strategize. I think it is particularly important with the possibility of cuts that we could face, the people that are on the fence about uh, these types of decisions that we would have this notification in place so that we could know what we're looking at going into budgeting session. So, I have a question before we sure. make a motion and vote. Why do we vote on this every year? Why isn't this something that's just permanently put somewhere? What's the purpose behind doing it every year? Um, I think it probably is just to protect uh, administratively that we're not just paying people frivolously to walk out the okay. door. I, I like that the board approves it. Uh, I don't know what it says in policy about it, but I like that the board approves it because it also puts it out into the what I would call the district's vision, uh, you know, for people to know, yes, the board approves it. We know that's going to be available this fall. We know the board supports that. Anytime folks are a little nervous about making that decision, they really want to know, is that a real offer? 
you know, so keeps it fresh it, in people's yeah, mind. Yeah, it's all. Okay. And Kathy puts that notification out this month uh, as well once the board approves it. Uh, so she puts that out to the district so that they can talk about that. All right. Can I get a motion? Madam Chair, I move to approve uh, the early notification bonuses based on the deadlines as listed and amounts. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? All right. Jay, consider for approval the Northwest BOCES student placement. I need a motion. Madam I Chair, I would move to approve the Northwest BOCES student placement. I'll second. Move to second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? <clears throat> All right, consider for approval bus stop at 2001 Highway 120 West. M Madam Chair, I recommend that we approve the bus stop at 2001 Highway 120 West. Can I get a second? Second. Moved and second. Any discussion? I see in her notes here it's, it's unavoidable it's actually on the highway which is unfortunate but all in favor aye, aye. aye. all opposed okay Ooh, we're getting close to the end board member and committee reports <laughs> okay no we <laughs> talk <laughs> <laughs> all right the rec board meets next week so nothing to report there um, <coughs> Northwest BOCES, Rick. Because of my knee replacement, I did not make that meeting. Because oh. I'm a wimp. Well. <laughs> Are they still virtual? Yeah. Yeah? And then I could have done it on the couch and going, oh! Because <laughs> <laughs> that was right after my surgery. <laughs> uh, all right. Uh, we haven't had an early childhood BOCES meeting, so nothing to report from me. CWC Bochies. Joe? No meetings. No CCC? Travis? Sherman? No. No? We're going quarterly. Is that yeah, right? we have dates coming out from Mrs. Sis. So does that mean the meetings are going to last longer than three no. hours? No, we're going <laughs> to try to do it the same amount of time and do a skeleton version. Okay. It's <laughs> for this year. Okay. Legislative Task Force? Not started. Not, not started. Building committee. I know there was a meeting, right? Well, I'm going to defer to Jerry for most of that. <laughs> okay. okay. <laughs> but there was two things we talked about in the future. Um, possibly having to mud jack the floors at the middle school was one of them, and another one that is, is, as Dustin's looking into is doing something with that play park. Yeah. So, um, that's two the things. That, chocolate park. Okay. Um, WSBA report, Nicole's not here. Um, board SMART goal revision review, I don't have anything attached. It's, it's on hold until we can travel. Oh, okay. You're working on your book study. So we're working on our book study. Um, I didn't bring my book with me, but I did read. <laughs> um, so, what do we want to discuss with the book study? We did, should have read through all seven principles. So, I'll, I'll have to admit, I did not read. I listened. Did the information <laughs> sink into your head? That's it all did. that matters. I had a hard time with this book sinking into my it, head. It's, ama <laughs> it's amazing um, how fast you can get through this when it's on audiobook and you're just driving. You've got a lot of windshield time. But... Um, Going through all the principles, you know, I think once it started to really get into principle four, that you know, like Travis said in the last meeting, it will all start to come together and tie together. Um, you know, there were there were definitely some some funny things that he mentioned throughout, but uh, you know the the Tetris effect I thought was actually interesting in how um, people in a 
study that were, um, you know, asked to play Tetris for hours a day for three days, and then at the end of that, they're dreaming about Tetris. Yeah. They're looking at city buildings and, you know, can <laughs> I put this over here and doing this, you know, it just how that kind of effect of an electronic device with such a simple game has on somebody, and then him playing, uh, what was it, Grand Theft Auto uh, for hours the night before, and then he walked out his building, and there was a police car right in front of him, and he was trying you know, to steal it. <laughs> steal his police car with yeah. a police officer sitting right in it. <laughs> I, mean, so, I mean, there were little stories like that that, you know, kind of help bring you back to the effects, the negative effects that some of these things have on us, and that we have to make that conscious effort to turn these negative things into positives. And it takes such a, you know, a, a strong will to do it. And he even talks about willpower in there. You know, that your your habits of falling into something, an easy pattern, takes over your willpower to do something that you should be doing. So it, it made me think about a lot of things in, in my personal life that I do. One, I make a very conscious effort to exercise multiple times a week because I know for a fact, uh, you know, in looking at in my own history, I feel better at the end of my workout, regardless of how hard I work out. I feel better throughout the week, and I actually feel stress relief. You know, which is all the things that, you know, routine exercise kind of kind of helps with. But then he also talks about how it actually helps you focus, um, you know, in getting things done. So I wish I could make it more of an effort to uh, work out in the mornings again. But it's a that's a difficult task. But I just going through those seven principles. I see a lot of things that I can do personally, and you know that I think we do as a board very well also um, and we make a conscious effort to work on our social relationship within this group and including um, the administrative staff and I, I, I give everybody kudos um, you know for making the effort to, to do that because of our book study because of our uh, annual retreat, you know, all the things that we do and in, in the way that board members are involved with so many different things within our district. Because um, that social piece really does help out a lot with the, you know, uh, happy event, happiness advantage. So I, I got a lot out of it. Anyone else? Not Two things I found was like how much they talked about average. We're, we're happy with average. And, and all the studies that I use focus on the ne negativity, not the positive. That's the two things I pulled out of it the most. All those principles was kind of like, uh, <laughs> well, slow down. I felt as I was reading through the principles, every time I would start to question what he was saying, like, well, yeah, but. Then the next principle would answer my yeah, but. And so it, it did, like Travis said, it, it came together really nicely with all of the principles. Um, I, I found out about myself personally that I am a positive person, um, but I forgot. <laughs> I forgot that, and this book was a good reminder. Did anybody go take the quiz, the survey? No, I did not. So I went, I went and did the survey, and now it locked me out, but I think, uh, Humor for what was my top one, uh, and I was like, "Well, I guess that kind of makes sense." <laughs> I just think it's impressive, uh, you know, how much of an effect you can have your ability to be successful in interactions in so much of your life. And you know, there's times, you know, where if things are not go, or you, if I come into some of these meetings or other things with a negative mindset. Is more on the negatives rather than the positives. 
agenda at the organization is actually good in right. regards to those pieces. So, like I say, it just it's a lot more. Um, I don't know if you see this uh, an interesting read in regards. I just didn't thought about how important some of that is in regards to people's ability to do things. Madam Chair, it was a timely revisit for me. Uh, in I'll be the first to admit that the last spring probably got me down as far as I've ever been as an educator. Just, you know, just I didn't feel like I got to really be superintendent and do the parts of the job, that part of the job that I enjoyed the most, which is trying to plan and do things that, that result in good results for kids. We were kind of just reactionary to whatever's happening. And we just had an admin team meeting where we kind of all, uh, for lack of a better term, kind of went around the room and made a pinky promise that we won't let this year be about the pandemic. We will stick, you know, we will focus on the things that we have in our mission at every level. And this year will be about learning. We'll roll with punches. We're going to have things that we're required to do, things that we may or may not like to do. But the ultimate goal is still learning. It's staying open as a school. It's thinking outside the box to try to keep our schools open. And I think that mindset for us in our community is really important because our kids are happy to be back to school. Uh, you know, you heard people talking about that a little bit, I think, in a few uh, settings tonight. But our kids are pretty happy to be at school, which, you know, sometimes we have to have a reminder about how important the things are that we have in our life and that, you know, might be a roundabout way that they get that appreciation for it. But uh, I know that I'm doing my very best to just stay focused on our actual things that we consider tight in our PLC and not all the other stuff. That's all stuff we have to do. We won't spend a lot of time arguing about it or you know, trying to get around it. We'll just do what we have to do. But we will focus on, and we're not gonna CCC. We can't probably have a meeting every month, but we can have a quarterly meeting. We'll just focus on what we can get done in that quarterly meeting and we'll just roll with that punch. And so anyway, it was a timely read for me. It was good timing. It was very good timing. It, it's, it's been a hard year, I think, for lots of people. I, I, I needed it, for sure. I think it's going to be one of those books that we, we reference frequently in our meetings, like we have done with Crucial Conversations um, and Good to Great. I think we will probably reference this one um, because there were lots of good stories and scenarios that stick in your mind and are easy to reference like your small circle. It's how I attacked my job today. <laughs> it was good. <laughs> so I was curious about one thing, you know, when because a lot of his little studies reflected on uh, some aspect of it having a happy memory or, you know, thinking of, of something that makes you happy. And so then, and, and then positive outcome from you know whatever it was that happened after that so then my thought was has there been any discussion amongst the administrative staff to encourage teachers just to take an additional 20 seconds like he said to have students stop and think about something positive something that makes them happy before a test or before the start of class or before something to see, you know, I, you know, is that, it's going to be hard to really, I think, tell because you don't have a control group, but I mean, why not just take that additional 20 seconds and, and create that environment in the classroom and then continue on? I think teachers do that naturally all day, every day. I mean, as, as a teacher, whenever I felt my, my class losing like I was losing them or uh, things were going downhill uh, that that's what you do is you come back to that positive spot you like stop start back over again you, you see teachers do it all the time you know that's why they they do the hugs and bubbles and mask up stand up those are positive reinforcements instead of shut up and stand in line you know? <laughs> Don't touch anybody. I mean, they've all kind of changed their language from the no and the don't and the stop to let's, you know. 
I think it's something that's just happened naturally, and you see kids are way more happy in school. They're not standing on the line out at recess because they couldn't keep their hands to themselves. <laughs> I don't know. It, it was a good book. I really enjoyed it. Is there anything that we want to do further? We want to finish um, it, the last, have everyone take the quiz for next month. Yeah? Everybody take the quiz. Do you have another book lined out for us? Not yet, but I will. Okay. That's perfect. So well, then we better take the quiz. quiz. <laughs> we got to do something. <laughs> there's nothing else we're moving on to superintendent's report then okay it's pretty short madam chair just a heads up we're we're really I, I know there's a concern just in our community about how lights on is going to function and I just want to share that's a concern for us as well right now we're having a really difficult time making what lights on is supposed to be fit into the guidelines of a pandemic and not mixing cohorts and uh, you know all the things that go with what lights on really is and what um, you know what our county health officials will approve and so I just want to shout out Julia and let her know I think she's doing a, a really nice job of trying to make things work I just would ask our community to kind of give us some grace as we figure out what what our after-school program looks like we're we're talking about potential big changes into the future uh, and what that might look like. Uh, you know, we're pursuing the grant and we're doing those things, but uh, just just so our community, so our board is aware, um, you know, we're kind of in a holding pattern right now, trying to figure out what this looks like and meet all the guidelines. But um, we're, we're just gonna have to play it by ear a little bit until we know more what our after school program looks like. Uh, also, I'm happy to report that last Friday I had a conversation with Superintendent Balo and our Smart uh, Start plan was approved. She uh, spoke highly of our plan uh, and our efforts to keep school open. She shared the same um, excitement uh, for school being open that we do, uh, you know, and I did talk with her a little bit about um, the ability to flex back and forth and uh, if we get into those tiers. Uh, in my next scheduled conversation with her, I would like, so just so the board is aware, uh, Mrs. Deramidi and Mrs. Sizz and I have spoken a couple of different times. If we get in the situation where we are possibly closed down as a school, I would like to have some alternative plans available to continue K-4 uh, education no matter where it's at, if we have to spread out across the entire district. Um, the data that is coming in in our elementary right now about what the loss looks like from having five and a half months off for our kids is a little bit alarming to me. And so I would like to start having those discussions with Superintendent Balo, with Dr. Miller, uh, and what that might look like. And that might mean that we're, it could be really outside the box. But I think if we're talking about the dangers of a pandemic, all of you have been to the PLC conference and you've heard Mike Manos uh, discussion about if a student doesn't read or doesn't graduate, you know, if they don't graduate or they don't read by third grade, what kind of effects that can have on their health and their livelihoods and all those things. And I think we got to keep that in balance and do whatever it takes. I think we just need to absolutely uh, be thinking about we're going to have to have people sitting next to our youngsters reading. We cannot lose any more ground as it pertains to elementary education. I think we can deliver, all, uh, I think Mrs. Daniels and Mr. Soderstrom have developed a fantastic plan that I think we will be able to deliver a lot of online or blended or whatever it might be for our 5 through 12 students. But if you're talking about teaching our students to read and be able to do their basic math facts and their bas basic math operations, I think we're going to have to have a little bit different plan. So I did uh, kind of break the ice with her and she said she'd be open to listening to those things want to let you know that in October or November, it kind of depends on uh, just some timing of a couple things here, we'll have a strategic plan that the board would accept based on the goals that you set uh, for this year. So in one of those two months, 
uh, the admin team will complete all of our action steps that will then report to you, all of you. Um, in October, we'll have the conflict of interest uh, discussion with uh, hopefully all. Or does anybody know if they're going to miss in October? That was kind of what I wanted to. Um, if you, if I just want to make sure everybody has that opportunity to participate in that discussion. We did hold it a month with Nicole and uh, Clay being out this month. So um, if anybody is, I mean, we're not in a big rush right now. We're not in hiring season for any of that. It could happen in November if we needed to. I just I kind of want to do the best. You'd be gone in October, Jim? October 20th? Yeah. Um, it can be November. We're when, no, I will be here in October. I, w I was looking at November. I will okay. I will be gone for November. Okay. <laughs> we'll shoot for October if anybody, you know, I know, I know part of the desire was that we'd have everybody available to talk about it. So we'll shoot for a time when everybody can make that meeting. Uh, right now it's scheduled for yeah. uh, the October, November meeting. And uh, other than that, we are uh, at the, uh, we're in the middle, or we're just kind of getting close to the middle of our fifth week of school. So if you're thinking about, you know, we're plugging right along, we're moving pretty fast. Uh, we're going to be at the nine weeks uh, before we know it. Um, there are a number of districts that have faced some challenges. And I just want to encourage us just all to be thinking about how we can roll with the punches a little bit and just keep moving forward because we, uh, we just need to move forward on behalf of our kids. And I know that that doesn't mean we don't get to skip guidelines or anything like that, but just be thinking outside the box about how we might be able to deliver instruction and just keep rolling. That's it. Well, um, Mr. Hunt, I'd like to say thank you for the email um, updating us. That was nice. I think it helped um, the m meeting move along tonight because sure. we had some information. So sure, I, we'll keep I pushing that. We'll keep pushing that out as it builds up to the point where it's worth you getting an email. Yeah. So we'll kick those out. And it's I have nice a, to read and process. So when I have you. an update with lights mm -hmm. on, that'll probably be included in there. We'll have a daycare update coming. You know, we're trying to find the sweet spot there with the amount of staff we have based on the number of students that we have. So we're going to have to work through what that might look like and what the shifts might look like for the workers and that. So everything, there's a lot of things that work in progress. So as soon as I have a little more solid information to give you, we'll kick those things out too. Okay. Anyone else? All right. Thanks, everybody. Thank you.